good afternoon to those of you who are joining us from Japan and a good morning to those of you who are tuning in from Europe. I'm Yuri Tarikomodior, country representative of Eurocentric Japan. I would like to welcome our attendees today and a special greeting to our speakers. So what can you actually see in this webinar today? Our title is Empowerment of Female Researchers, Diversity in EU and Japan Perspectives. And today we would like to talk about these fields, these STEM fields, which are underrepresented across the world, particularly the gender of an author in specific field, as well as the topic of their research could impact evaluations of their scientific quality of their research. So in this webinar, we propose to highlight the state of gender bias in science in Europe and Japan and present some remedies for this consistent underrecognition of female scientists. We also hope to show how gender biases affect the science communication uh, uh, trainings and how a few best practice examples of what grants are available exclusively to women could be very helpful to this audience. Speakers will also discuss how gender role incongruity might affect assessments of scientific quality and interest in collaboration and what has been done so far to change this trajectory, especially via available funding and other means of assistance. Again, thank you very much for coming and I would like to introduce our first speaker for today. The opening remarks will be delivered by Mr. Osamu Kobayashi, who is the Director at the Department of International Affairs at the Japan Science and Technology Agency. Kobayashi-san, if you could please deliver your speech. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction, uh, Yudita-san. So can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you perfectly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So good morning and uh, good evening, uh, depending on where you are. I am Osamu Kobayashi, Director at the Department of International Affairs, the Japan Science and Technology Agency. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this webinar, the Empowerment of Female Researchers, Diversity in EU and Japan Perspectives. JST and the EuroAccess Japan have been collaborating since 2020 and have organized a variety of events uh, with the aim of stimulating the research cooperation between Japan and Europe. Today, uh, we gather here to share some of the best practices in Japan and Europe for the empowerment of female researchers and address the challenges that lie on the path to gender equality in research and uh, ultimately the better science. Across the world, the female researchers are making remarkable strides in various scientific disciplines. Their innovative thinking, their unique perspectives, and the dedication have propelled our societies forward and have propelled our societies forward and driven the scientific breakthroughs that impact us all. Yet, despite these achievements, we still cannot ignore the disparities and the barriers. From the earliest stage of education, the female students may encounter the stereotypes that discourage them from pursuing the careers in STEM fields and could limit their aspirations and career choices. The further along the path in higher education, the female researchers often define themselves underrepresented in faculty positions despite their profound contributions to their fields. This underrepresentation deprives them of access to essential resources and opportunities. This seminar aims to shed light on these challenges and more importantly, offer variable insight to overcome them. Over the next one and a half hours, we have a lineup of speakers who will share their experiences and the initiatives undertaken by universities and the institutions, both in Japan and Europe. I'd like to extend my gratitude to all the speakers and attendees for your participation today. 
And I hope this webinar will be a valuable opportunity for you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kobayashi-san, for the very kind words and uh, for having this collaboration with EuroSouth Japan. We truly appreciate your assistance with uh, multiple matters and also for co-organizing this uh, webinar to assist uh, female researchers in STEM. Our second speaker for today is Mario Shima sensei she is a professor at the University of Tokyo and also director of diversity and inclusiveness at the Japan Science and Technology Agency. The title of her presentation is Empowerment of Women Researchers in STEM Fields in Japan. So once again, thank you very much for inviting me to give a talk at this uh, webinar. I'm so uh, delighted to be here. And uh, uh, good morning to uh, people in Europe and uh, good evening the people in Japan. Uh, my name is Marie Oshima. I'm with the University of Tokyo. And uh, as a, 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 the introduction, I also serve as a director of uh, diversity and inclusiveness at uh, JST. And today, I'd like to talk about the empowerment of uh, well, female researchers in Japan, particularly in STEM fields. And my talk uh, will uh, consist of uh, two parts, and uh, this is the outline of uh, to my talk. Uh, first, I like to uh, briefly touch upon on the present state of uh, gender equality in Japan, and I like to review the current state through the statistics. And since I'm a director of uh, uh, gender uh, the diversity inclusive inclusiveness. I like to talk about the uh, the situation in Japan and as well as uh, the situation at the University of Tokyo. And then a second part, I like to uh, uh, give some example about the initiative for empowerment of a female researcher and also uh, uh, the female students in the STEM fields. And I like to also uh, talk about what actually uh, JSD is doing. And also, I'm in, involved in a STEAM education. So I'd like to talk about the STEAM education that I'm working on right now. And then uh, with the future uh, perspective. And uh, before I go on to my talk, I'd like to briefly uh, you know, talk about myself. My background is a mechanical engineering, and my uh, research is uh, computational thermodynamics. So I'm working on uh, uh, the biofuel. And uh, my uh, research topics, as uh, shown in this figure, I work on uh, bio microfluid engineering. So uh, I try to uh, uh, work on uh, image-based modeling and multi-scale blood flow simulation for cardiovascular diseases in order to provide a better understanding and also good treatment for the individual patients. And as I mentioned, uh, I'm also working on uh, uh, STEAM and uh, STEM education. And uh, the, uh, the, the reason why I'm involving this uh, um, STEM and uh, STEAM education is uh, the mechanical engineering department has a very few female students. So I like to encourage them to go on to the science field. So that's the, uh, the motivation that I'm working on this uh, STEM and STEAM education. And also, uh, I had uh, uh, experience in uh, uh, to serve as the president of uh, JSNE, Japan Society of Mechanical Engineers. This is uh, one of the largest academic uh, society in Japan, and also has a very long history. And uh, when I served as a president, we celebrate the 120 anniversary. That was uh, uh, 27. So I was very lucky to have this uh, opportunity. And then uh, I'd like to move on to the to talk about the present state of uh, gender equality in Japan. And uh, as you know, the global gender gap index was uh, reported recently. And as you can see in this slide, Japan is uh, a 125th rank out of uh, 146. Uh, countries. And then uh, it dropped down nine ranks 
from the last year. And uh, well, the, uh, the, the, as you can see in this, uh, um, this pointer, um, like uh, the education and uh, the categories in uh, education and health are uh, you know, doing well. In, uh, well, but for example, uh, uh, the politics and the economy, uh, the categories are not doing well. And uh, the and uh, that means that uh, uh, this uh, uh, the Japan has a low rate in a uh, labor force participation, and uh, we have uh, like uh, the permanent position and also the non permanent position. And uh, women tends to have a non permanent uh, uh, position, and that is a very serious uh, social issue in Japan. And uh, as far as uh, the politics is concerned. It also has a very low rate in a political and leadership position, and that will be uh, 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 discouraged for young uh, female, uh, the women, to go on to politics as well as uh, leadership in, in uh, any kind of uh, field. And uh, the STEM field has uh, less uh, the, uh, the women, so that is also a very, very serious problem in Japan. And since I'm a researcher, I like to also talk about the female researcher in Japan. Uh, you know, this you, you can see how uh, the female, the number, and also racial changes in in year. So it's gradually increasing and also increasing steadily, but it's very very slow. And you know, it's very shocking to see, even though uh, the number of the female. Uh, researchers is increasing. Um, still, we are like uh, only a uh, fifteen point seven percent, and then uh, it's the the lowest rank in, among the OECD countries. And uh, these statistics uh, also includes the humanity and social science, not only natural science. So even uh, with the humanity and uh, social science. Uh, the population of a female researcher is not that uh, large in Japan, and uh, the well, and talk about the same field. It's it's uh, not a very low, so uh, it's very uh, low comparing to fifteen point seven percent. And also, uh, uh, not only a female uh, the researcher, the percentage of a female students who are going on to the science and engineering is not that high either. This is also statistics showing the percentage uh, in, in the OCD countries. And once again, Japan is the lowest among the OECD countries. In the recent years, as you can uh, know, the needs for engineering and the, uh, the, uh, the field has been growing. But like uh, uh, the IT and decarbonization and environmental issues, and uh, there will be a tremendous opportunity for women in science and engineering, but not many girls major in science and engineering. So that means that in a, uh, the international, uh, internationally, there are not, not many uh, Japanese female working on this uh, very important. Uh, um, Fields. And then uh, I like to also uh, uh, show you uh, the situation at the University of Tokyo. This slide summarizes the number and the ratio of the female faculty members at the University of Tokyo. It's uh, gradually uh, increasing, uh, but still it's a uh, 50.5% in uh, associ uh, for associate professor and for 92 point percent for professors so it's uh you know if you looking at, if you take a look at the professor it's less than 10 percent of the total uh, faculty member at the university of tokyo so it's not that uh, hard unfortunately and also i like to uh see uh show you the number of uh, male female students and also ratio of uh, female students at the undergraduate level 
uh, well, we uh, struggle to increase the number of uh, female students at the University of Tokyo. And uh, it's also gradually increasing, but it's still 20.1%. Uh, it's also include uh, um, uh, the literature and also uh, uh, the social science. And for example, uh, if we uh, look at uh, uh, the situation in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, it's about less than 5%. So it's a very low. And also uh, uh, the JSN, the Mechanical, uh, the Japan Association, uh, Society of Mechanical Engineering also has only 3% of a female uh, members, members. So uh, mechanical engineering and also electrical engineering do not have uh, many female students and also researchers. So that's why we are trying to increase the number of uh, female students as well as uh, female researcher in this uh, field. And that was undergraduate level. And also uh, un uh, the graduate level, well, uh, the, uh, the, the percentage inc uh, is increasing comparing the uh, undergraduate level, but still it's not that high. Uh, for uh, the female uh, students, for um, uh, so if we include the um, international students, the the ratio um, is is high. But if it's only with uh, Japanese female students, the ratio becomes about twenty percent. So I'd like to uh, quickly summarize uh, the situation in Japan. The, the gender equality in Japan, uh, for the gender equality in Japan, the ratio of female researcher has been increasing steadily, but it's, it's quite slow. And when we look at the uh, uh, current state in Japan from global point of view, the percentage of female researcher in Japan is the lowest rank in the OECD countries as well as the equal of a female student in science and engineering. So uh, we, uh, that will be, uh, maybe in the future, we will encounter the really serious problem. And also, uh, you know, talking about the University of Tokyo, the percentage of female faculty member and also female students in both undergraduate and graduate levels are not so high, even including the humanity and social science. So in order to meet ever increasing needs for STEM human resources, it is important not only to increase the number of the female researchers but, and also uh, uh, the students, but, but also to increase the number of women in leadership uh, position. Because uh, if you, uh, uh, if the younger uh, people look at, uh, to see the grass uh, ceiling, in the uh, like a, uh, the same field, they, that would be discourage them to go on to the field. So uh, I think uh, it would be very encouraging them to see uh, the female researcher are uh, doing very well in this field. But unfortunately, the example are not that much. So that would be also very important to show how the female researchers are doing a uh, great job in this field. So let's move on to the initiative for empowerment of a female researcher in STEM field. So if we look at if we look at the statistics, it's a bit uh, very uh, discouraging and also disappointing. So we like to uh, you know improve the situation. So I'd like to uh, uh, share with you some of the practices for empowerment of, uh, uh, for women in STEM field. And uh, JST uh, is trying to work on a, a, a couple of, uh, uh, it's trying to uh, a very good uh, uh, um, the practice. So I'd like to uh, show you some of them. And first, I'd like to uh, uh, talk about the improvement of working, working environment to achieve work-life balance. And also encouraging a female researcher to take a leadership position. 
And also we set up some awards for female uh, researchers. And that will be a very good example for female researcher and also future uh, young scientists. And also I'd like to show you some of uh, uh, the example that we are trying in uh, STEM and STEAM education for young generation. So first of all, um, the, uh, this uh, is showing the, the maternity and uh, parentry and uh, child care, nursing care support programs. So the programs is uh, uh, increasing and also uh, uh, the female researcher is uh, taking this uh, the program so that's uh, in, uh, by doing that, uh, they are not, uh, 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 that will be uh, helpful not to slow down their research. Uh, research. So uh, um, the JST provides uh, uh, the young, uh, uh, the female researcher with the ad additional research money up to uh, 300,000 yen or $2,000 uh, per month to hire research assistant to help research and teaching the teaching and uh, as well as to pay for daycare so they can attain the academic uh, meeting and sort of stuff. So that's the, uh, uh, the initiative for the JST is uh, providing at this point. And also uh, uh, we are encouraging, uh, encourage female researcher to uh, apply uh, the funding. Uh, and uh, the, these uh, funding are very uh, competitive, but uh, they are, uh, we are encouraged them to apply to this uh, you know, funding. And the uh, number of uh, the female applicants and also the female uh, the researcher who actually uh, obtain the funding is uh, uh, gradually increasing like this. So ACT X is designed for uh, young uh, the researcher and forest is also uh, designed for uh, the young researcher as well. And then a percentage of uh, female members in the committee uh, was since uh, JST uh, organized uh, very important uh, uh, the committee, for example, to decide the funding and so on. So we are trying to increase the number of uh, female chair. So now uh, the, it, it was uh, five chairs in 2013. But now it's a 12 chairs in 2020. So gradually we were trying to increase that. And then now it's a 31% uh, in, in uh, the goal was a 30%. But uh, by fiscal year 2020, it became a 31%. So the goal was achieved by uh, in fiscal year 20, uh, 2020. And then uh, uh, we are uh, set up uh, some awards for uh, brilliant uh, female researcher, particularly for younger females uh, researcher. And li I'd like to show you uh, one, uh, 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 two of them. And the first one is uh, um, the Jun Ashida Award. It started from uh, 2019. And the award is uh, designed to give uh, to uh, uh, to uh, award for outstanding female researcher in principle under 40 years old. And then, uh, uh, and also we also provide award for uh, institution which promote their activities for um, the female researchers. And uh, the Jun Ashida is uh, a well-known uh, fashion designer, the Japanese fashion designer. So this uh, uh, award was uh, based on the foundation of the uh, Jun Ashida Award. And uh, these are the recipient of uh, last year uh, of uh, uh, Jun Ashida Awards. 
We also have uh, another uh, uh, award for um, the young, the younger uh, female researcher. And uh, this is uh, 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 the at the is is uh, uh, the Marie uh, Curie Award. And uh, we had uh, four recipients uh, last year. And uh, as you can see, uh, they are internationally actively uh, have a very prominent uh, achievement. And then uh, uh, we also have uh, some uh, uh, the youth program to foster the next generation uh, and also to provide support for girl students to uh, go on to uh, STEM field. And we also organize uh, 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 some of uh, the activities like this. For example, we offer uh, young uh, high school students to have a science experience and also uh, introducing uh, uh, learning and also job uh, experience in science and so those stuff. So this is uh, the program we organize at the JST. And then uh, I like to uh, talk about our uh, initiative for STEM and STEAM education. So um, we are uh, working on, uh, we are designing the workshop and the development of the teaching material for high school students. And uh, the good thing is uh, the unique part of our STEM education is that we are collaborating with the industry. So uh, we have uh, like a workshop and also uh, teaching uh, materials like this. And then uh, I like to uh, summarize my talk with a future perspective. Uh, it is important to resolve the gender gap in the science and engineering to advance innovation further. As a government agency, JST has been improving and reinforcing the environment and support system for empowerment of female researchers in STEM fields. JST also has been trying to take proactive initiative for empowerment of the female researcher as well as the female students. And also I, uh, I touch up on the STEM and STEAM education. STEM and STEAM education is an effective way to motivate young girls to go into the STEM field through experience to solve social issues. So uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Oshima Sensei, for this very interesting presentation. And I hope that our audience has managed to uh, take away lots of uh, important facts from uh, your speech. Our next speaker for today is Tamao Saito, who is head of diversity at global research division at Sofia University. The professor could not be here with us in real time. Hence, she has sent a recording. The title of her presentation is Diversity and Gender Equality in Private Universities in Japan. Hello, I'm Tamao Saito from Sofia University. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to talk to you today. Today, I'm going to talk about diversity and the gender equality in private universities in Japan. For a period of one and a half years until March 2023, Sophia University, in collaboration with Doshisha University, has been working on the issue of Diversity Research Environment Initiative, research type. The first step of this initiative was to clarify the problems unique to private universities in promoting diversity and to find the solutions to these problems by identifying good practices from overseas and by demonstrating how to make them adaptable for private universities in Japan. Therefore, 
we first analyze the current situation in both universities. This slide shows one of the comparisons we made. Sophia University, which was selected for MEC's GST program to support women researchers, referred to as the MEC's GST program, has steadily increased the proportion of women researchers. On the other hand, Toshisha University, which did not undertake the Women Researchers Support Program, as you can see, has shown virtually no change. The result of this analysis shows that nothing changes without implementing deliberate university-wide initiative and that the mixed JST program has had a significant impact. It was found that the program was adopted mainly by national universities and a few private universities. Mixed JST program have a significant impact on diversity promotion. We selected 54 universities of similar size as our university and conducted a survey based on the following five criteria. Existence of a support structure for women researchers existence of a support system for balancing work and family life, existence of an on-campus nursery or daycare center, existence of a web-based information informing support programs for women researchers, and the availability of a publicized general employer plan. Toshisha University took the lead in this survey. This is a result. The group on the right is a group of universities that are indicated well-developed environment for diversity and is labeled the advanced type. The left-hand side is a group of universities that are in an undeveloped state, which we labeled the startup type. Private universities are shown in red, and national universities are in black. The pink circle indicate the universities that were selected for the next JST program. Among advanced type, only one of the 15 private universities was non-adopted. In addition, all 13 national universities were of the advanced type. On the other hand, most of private universities landed under the startup type. Thus, the challenge for private universities is that the diversity promotion situation is completely polarized. Sophia University and Doshisha University can be considered a good representation of the advanced type and the startup type, respectively. Here is a summary of the issues. It was shown that private universities are literally diverse in terms of size, organization, historical background, and funding principles. How should the diversity of private universities be addressed? I won't go into too much details here, but Sophia University was selected for the 2009 program and has successfully created a basic environment in support of women researchers through four major initiatives, as you can see here. Now, all these initiatives are self-funded and sustainable, and we, can, we continue to improve upon this system. What are the problems faced by Sophia University as an advanced type institution? The following figures show the changes in the 10 years since the program ended. The number of women researchers in the entire university and the Faculty of Science and Technology has grown steadily. Furthermore, the number of women researchers adopted for grants in aid for scientific research has also increased. However, the problem that has persisted was the proportion of women in senior positions. The percentage of women in upper-level university staff positions is rising steadily. But the number of women in top 
posts in faculty and administrative management has not increased and is rather flat-lined. This indicates that women are not involved in institutional decision-making. Since the model development project focused on improving the environment, the number of women science and engineering researchers increased as a result, but few women were being promoted to senior positions. We determined the challenge for Sofia University is to develop women leaders. Therefore, we searched for good practices on how to solve this problem by visiting and conducting a survey at Mahiro University. Mahiro University is a national university in Thailand, but is partner institution of Sofia University. In recent years, the university has made a great strides in the field of gender equality in the THE impact ranking. So, we expect to find good practices. The detailed study is available on our website, but here we will show you four good practices. Due to time constraints, the next slide show you how two of these have been implemented in Sofia University. Good practice one. Creating university values based on international values. We explained to the president, vice presidents, and the executives that we will focus on the impact ranking SDG 5 based on the analysis data of the IR office. With the understanding of the upper management, we will try to shift from supporting women researchers to university strategies. Support for women researchers is, is specified in the midterm action plan from following year. Good practice four, effective and transparent management system based on meritocracy and performance agreement. We introduced performance vision in place of performance agreement, which serve as a communication facilitating protocol so that faculty can more easily communicate their superiors. What we are aiming for is to foster a safe and comfortable environment where your faculty can increase their performance and thereby improving organizational strength. This diagram represents the SOFIA model, which is our strategy to support women researchers. Four items including good practices from abroad, have been adopted and introduced into our university system. The aim is to increase the number of female professors and develop female leaders from this cycle. Finally, I would like to end by explaining the image of leadership that Sofia University aspires to. Every year, we published a collection of role models, and in 2022, we chose the theme of role models for female leader. Dr. Sadako Ogata graced the first page of this booklet. Private universities have their respective image of leadership based on their funding spirit. In this case, Sophia University, it is servant leader. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Saito. The very insightful presentation has touched upon a number of topics that are, I'm sure, very useful for our audience. And I would like to invite our next speaker, who will talk about gender equality in STEM research careers, policies and actions in Europe. René Aguilier is the Secretary General for the TIME Association, and I would like to invite her to deliver her speech. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your invitation. And here is my uh, presentation related, as it was uh, just uh, mentioned, uh, regarding gender equality in STEM and, and some examples, some practices uh, that are uh, implemented in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. So I um, decided to 
have a presentation divided in three uh, three parts. The first part, I will say a few uh, a, a few words that I will go very quickly because it was already mentioned uh, by the two uh, previous speakers. But what is the general context uh, related to uh, um, to the representation of women in higher education and uh, in research? Um, then I will uh, go a step further um, mentioning and talking about, um, well, a few examples or um, the main, let's say, policies that are in place by uh, the uh, European Commission at the moment. And I will specifically mention the gender equality uh, plan related to uh, the big uh, funding research program, the uh, Horizon uh, Europe. And um, and then I would present a few few examples of practices. Um, well, it turned out that a couple of months ago, actually, I was uh, I was in Japan because uh, we had a project. Uh, we conducted a survey with Sofia University and Doshisha University uh, um, to well, they were also interested to to know the practices of why in Europe. So uh, I, I will uh, I will present uh, the results of uh, of this particular survey, but. Before going into that presentation, the, the, the first question that we could raise, uh, we could ask ourselves is, why do we think as, uh, as citizens, as professors, why do we think that uh, gender equality is important? Why are we talking about this topic uh, today? It's this slide, I would say it's much a personal point of view, I would say, but as a first point, I, I will I will simply mention that it's a matter of uh, of of social justice uh, in a sense. Um, men, women have to be uh, treated as a person and as professional uh, equally. And um, as uh, it is mentioned by the United Nations, uh, it's a fundamental uh, human right uh, value. And um, as in many uh, other countries, but since I will uh, particularly mention uh, some example um, um, uh, raised by the uh, European country, it's uh, expressed as a funding value of the uh, European Union. To be a bit more pragmatic and to come back to that question of why do we think gender equality is important, I, I was coming across a few uh, publications, and I think I found quite interesting to see that it said, uh, according to some researcher, that uh, well, there is some evidence that uh, advancing that gender equality, uh, uh, gender equality in higher education and uh, research has a, a positive uh, benefits. I mean, the more your team is balanced the better is the efficiency, the creativity and the productivity uh, of, uh, uh, of, of your project. And to be a bit more uh, uh, pragmatic, if I could say, but, um, and it was uh, mentioned by also Professor Oshima, but it, the thing is there will be many, many uh, more opportunities uh, in uh, science and engineering. Uh, by uh, 2030, I found a report it's uh, that says that there will be seven million new jobs in STEM uh, by uh, in Europe by 2030. So how are we going to find all these uh, competencies to fill in uh, this uh, particular job? We're definitely more people in science and engineering, and definitely uh, more uh, women. So coming back now to the core of the presentation, what? What do we know uh, about uh, the representation of uh, women in research? And a few, a few, a few statistics were mentioned uh, earlier, so I'm, I'm going to repeat some of them. But sometimes repetition is quite uh, is quite good. And um, as you can see, um, this chart shows the share of female researcher uh, uh, worldwide. Um, as a percentage of total researcher, and so these statistics are from 2018. But the main conclusion that we could have, as you can clearly see, indeed, in some countries like Romania, South Africa, Estonia, Portugal, Spain, there is quite a balance between the number of uh, women and male uh, researchers. 
uh, but it, it was it once mentioned previously in first what we can have as a conclusion that in many countries still women researchers so i'm talking you know in in in, in general women researchers are still significantly significantly underrepresented and japan being uh, the last uh, country in terms of female researcher representation um, now if we go a step further is what what do we know about the representation of female researchers uh, and, and and students particularly now in uh, in science and um, the first things that we should uh, look at or I, I will first mention is if you look at the OECD average still um women are uh, 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 are definitely going more into uh, um, um into natural sciences uh, 52 percent are going in this particular uh, field whereas you could see that uh, 26 uh, 26 percent are only going into engineering that's that's an average if you look at the OECD countries. Um, we know, uh, and that's uh, uh, now uh, the percentage uh, of Japan, that if we look at the science, uh, at science, at the science field, and if you look at Japan, and if you compare it to the OECD average, you see that 27% are going into natural uh, sciences and 16% are going into engineering. So yeah, indeed, indeed, um, uh, according uh, uh, to uh, uh, the latest uh, uh, data that we have still, there is a, still some improvement uh, related, I would say first to the global representation of women in science and particularly in engineering, and then indeed some improvement uh, regarding the position of uh, Japan. I was also interested uh, to uh, to analyze the situation per uh, scientific fields in uh, the European uh, universities, um, and uh, what uh, you could uh, actually uh, see. And I'm going to uh, going into a bit more detail about the slides that. Uh, we have at the moment that you see that the representation of female academics on the less on the left and uh, you see the representation of female uh, students it's clearly uh, uh, um, uh, i would say even a cliche of of other representation that we could have most uh, most of um, the, the female students and the female academic staff are clearly well, or there is a quite a balance uh, represented in fields such as chemistry, chemical engineering, political science, medicine. This is where um, we find the highest representation in terms of female academic staff and female students, whereas um, fields such as uh, industrial engineering, computer science, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering are still um, underrepresented uh, by, uh, by, by, by women, at least uh, for uh, the uh, countries part of the European uh, Union. So we know the data. I think it has been uh, said by a few uh, speakers about the context, about the representation of uh, of the female researchers, of the female students um, in science and engineering. Um, no, what are what are the barriers? What are the facts? And and are there any uh, are there any solutions? Um, and 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 the question what I. I I think this slide is not going to surprise anyone. I think we are quite all aware um, about uh, uh, about the different issues um, related to this matter. Uh, the question is how to tackle actually, uh, how to tackle them. But let me very quickly uh, uh, mention some of the barriers. Uh, it has been said before, indeed, 
um, the lack of uh, of female uh, mentors of female models um, is is one issue the uh, the implicit the unconscious uh, stereotype uh, that we could have even as as women <laughs> related to um, some uh, some fields some package jobs uh, that we think is some female students uh, could you know figure out that they are not well uh, suited for uh, for for this uh, kind of uh, field such as mechanical engineering or civil engineering or computer science where we have they have you know uh, all the place in that particular field the salary differences that we could have also between men and women as a penalty related to motherhood um it's uh we 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 tend to talk more and more about it but sexual harassment that we could uh, find uh, in, in, in some particular uh, context. And something also is quite interesting uh, uh, to look at is, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a human being uh, um, uh, issue, but the change to, uh, to, uh, to resistance to that particular situation. So I think at least, uh, among uh, uh, among us, uh, and I hope uh, 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 we all agree that these barriers should be removed. But as I was just saying before, the question is how how to design a successful uh, strategy. Uh, how can we do it indeed to uh, motivate uh, more uh, more students, more female students going into science engineering? How to create you know this context where um, women could feel also um, comfortable in, in, in that particular uh, context. Um, so I will jump to uh, the second part uh, of uh, my uh, presentation and I will just mention one particular uh, policy uh, that has been uh, launched by the uh, European Commission, as I was saying before, this is now, what well, this is now. Definitely a, a, a priority uh, that uh, the uh, um, European Commission is uh, is pushing that the uh, European universities are also uh, implementing. So for now, I will just uh, tackle or focus about the gender equality uh, plan. And um, the idea is quite uh, simple, if I could say so, in a sense. Um, as I, I, it's related to uh, um, the main uh, uh, research funding uh, program, the uh, program called uh, Horizon Europe, uh, as it did, is it a, is a key uh, key uh, financial funding program for uh, research and uh, innovation. And what has been um, re implemented by the uh, European Commission is when a researcher, when a team of researchers want to apply for such a funding, research uh, organization or higher education institution must have a gender equality plan. This is now mandatory and this is uh, an eligibility criterion for applying to um, this particular funding. Uh, the question is, okay, uh, that's the criteria of eligibility, but what is exactly a gender equality plan? What, what, is, what it is behind? Um, well, a gender equality plan first uh, must fulfill four mandatory requirements. The first one, um, the um, uh, organization must have publish a formal document on the institution website, which must be uh, signed, which must be approved, and which must be signed by uh, the top management. The university uh, also has to show that there are dedicated resources, and I insist about dedicated resources, the commitment of resources and the expertise in gender equality to, of course, to implement the plans, so the professional resources, professional structures, um, to make sure that indeed, uh, this is not just a, you know, a, 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 a statement, uh, it, it's, it's something that is uh, real and uh, the university is putting resources uh, 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 behind. 
what also the European Commission is asking uh, behind the gender equality plan that the organization must prove that they will collect uh, the data and monitor uh, them. So there must be an annual reporting based on educators. And the last point that must be um, showcased uh, behind the gender equality plan is that the institution uh, must also show that they will organize some uh, training on gender equality and uh, uh, conscious bias for uh, staff and and I think I will come back to that one and decision makers. So what is a good uh, 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 gender equality plan or, or what are the expectations also uh, to, to go a bit more details about the EU Commission related to the gender equality plan? Um, what the EU Commission will look at, it's as, as I just said, it's not a matter just to say, oh yes, uh, I've got a gender equality plan, I've got a nice a document or publication on my website, and 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 so I'm, uh, um, I'm 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 clean you now. Uh, kind of, a, I would say, a gender washing. No, um, the, 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 there must be uh, there must be a, a vision. There must be a objective, and it has to be uh, measurable. So it must be uh, the, the 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 objectives uh, uh, part uh, of the gender equality plan must be uh, worded as. Uh, concrete as possible, you must be specific, there must be, as I just said, there must be indicators, quantitative and quality, so we can we can measure and we can also monitor. Um, it has to be uh, approved, and I should have started actually by this argument, but definitely has to be approved, accepted by the top management. Without the approval of the leadership, it doesn't make any sense. And of course, it must be realistic. It doesn't make any sense to say that we're going to improve the percentage of female researchers by 50%. Uh, it, it, it has to be, um, it has to be, yeah, indeed, uh, achievable uh, with a, a defined uh, time frame and 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 with you know uh, the proof of uh, the resources. Um, well, one example, if you say indeed. Uh, uh, well, our vision as institution is that we um, uh, 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 we should uh, abolish, you know, uh, uh, some of the uh, barriers that are uh, uh, pr um, uh, preventing uh, uh, the uh, uh, improvement of the careers of the women. Uh, the objective being, yes, okay, we're going. Our objective is going, is going to increase the share of women among uh, the new uh, appointing professors. And what is uh, and what is your target uh, in terms of um, in terms of percentage? Uh, one thing could be, and as I will show uh, it a bit later, uh, we want to increase uh, the number of women uh, into decision making. Indeed, again, uh, 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 how, how, how much you want to uh, to increase, and what is your time frame uh, time frame to to do so? No, um, I. I I will uh, jump to uh, the uh, last uh, part of uh, my uh, presentation, and um, and I will showcase a few uh, um, a, a few examples, a few uh, initiatives uh, that were um, uh, that are uh, implemented by uh, some of the members uh, of the Time Association. So the Time Association is a is an international network of uh, 56 um, uh, technical uh, universities uh, in 25 countries. And for example, in Japan, uh, we have uh, uh, Keio University, uh, Doshisha University, and Yokohama National University, just to um, to give you a, a bit about, uh, about, the, about the context. And uh, a couple of months, as I was saying, uh, I was collaborating uh, with uh, two Japanese uh, universities, uh, so Doshisha University and Sofia University, about uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, policy and how to uh, uh, improve the representation of uh, of female and uh, uh, female researchers and uh, students, uh, female students into into science, and to to to, to see uh, what we have uh, done is to conduct a survey among. Uh, the Time Association members, 
uh, because we have a lot of also of, of, uh, of European members. So it was it's always interesting to see what the others are doing. Even if I uh, I want to say it's uh, well, there are examples, but I understand that also each country um, has its own context, has its own culture, has its own infrastructures, infrastructures. So, I mean, uh, it's it's it can be difficult to 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 sometimes to implement uh, the different ideas or the different policies uh, that you see in other countries. But at least uh, the idea is to is to raise, I would say, to share and to raise uh, awareness, and then to see, of course if uh, it can be implemented. Um, yeah, so that's uh, uh, some members that are part of, uh, of the time association. So it's a, uh, a representation. Mostly we have European members, but members also in, uh, in, uh, in, in Brazil, uh, as I say, in China, in Japan, uh, one member in Canada, um, um, and one member in, uh, in Australia. And so this uh, survey, uh, was uh, conducted among uh, this uh, uh, member. We had 45 questions. Uh, we receive, we, we target actually uh, 16 uh, time uh, uh, members. And uh, for today, I um, decided to uh, focus the uh, survey results on three issues, namely how how the, 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 how this particular university is uh, promote uh, within the within their institution such a policy. Second, uh, um, um, second uh, field that uh, I want I would like to, to, to mention is uh, related to the professional support. What are um, what are the resources uh, that um, they are um, implemented uh, behind to, to 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 make sure that. Uh, this uh, particular policy uh, is in practice uh, um, uh, implemented and in terms of education and tra in training also what uh, the members are uh, doing. So um, the first uh, topic is related to promotion and the question that we ask to our members, simple question you could say, but it's a way to start. Um, the question that we have is, do the members list the promotion of gender equality as a university or corporate policy on their website. As you can see, among uh, the, 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 the members of the time association that 94% um, say yes, indeed, uh, we, uh, it's public, we advocate, we promote, we communicate uh, about it and it's uh, um, uh, published on our uh, website. And uh, uh, look at, uh, uh, we have also we, the overall uh, context uh, regarding the Japanese university, so uh, the public, the national, and, and the private. Uh, in that case, uh, uh, and uh, this actually uh, data uh, were uh, provided by the National Diversity uh, Network, in the data related uh, to 2019, but uh, what we know is that 63% uh, of the Japanese universities says indeed, yes, uh, we do uh, we do promote this policy on our uh, website. And if you look at the private uh, uh, university, uh, on well, let's say 50-50 to be diplomatically correct, but uh, 42, yeah, almost 50% says indeed, yes, uh, regarding the private uh, universities in Japan say yes, indeed. Uh, this is something that we communicate, we advocate, but still, uh, as uh, you can uh, uh, see, uh, still 58% don't even mention it on uh, on their on their website. Just just an example uh, about uh, how how it is uh, communicated uh, on, uh, on 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 the website of uh, of the university, for example, University of Mons. Uh, which is a uh, top uh, uh, scientific university in Belgium, well, they have a gender and diversity plan with concrete measures that are uh, that has been approved first uh, by the top uh, management and is actively communicated within uh, this is uh, within the institution. It's kind, I would say, of uh, of, a, of a guideline. Uh, France is also is doing uh, uh, the same. They have a national action plan. 
that is approved in that case by the Ministry of Higher Education Research and Innovation. The same for Politecnico di Milano, which is a top institution in, in, in Italy also. They have a gender equality plan uh, for 2021, 2026, that's the latest one. It's approved, felt by the top management. It's uh, published then on the website and they have a, a gender uh, equality uh, audit that is uh, uh, published again uh, on the website. It's it's open to the public so you can see um, what they have decided, what they have decided, what they have approved, uh, what are the target, and and where they are. What is the situation within um, within the institution? How how, how, how has been uh, implemented, and if the objective are not uh, full, uh, fulfilled. Um, in terms of uh, professional uh, support, the question that we had among the members were. Within your organization, within your university, uh, how do you support or do you, do you have uh, resources, structures to support female researchers and professors? And um, within the time context, uh, the one, uh, the 16 members uh, answer yes, yes, 75% uh, have dedicated resources related uh, to, uh, to support uh, female uh, researchers. Where has if you look at uh, the, the the Japanese uh, context again uh, the overall context in Japan related to universities is still you know uh, 50 50 in terms of, um, of 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 offices of resources of support uh, to um, for female researchers and professor and it's even less better um, related to the uh, private uh, university coming back. Um, you know, I, I was mentioning uh, uh, about about the resources. What do I mean uh, behind this term of resources? Well, for example, in 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 KTH, um, KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden, uh, they have a permanent, and I insist about permanent. They have a permanent unit that is um, uh, with dedicated resources, with dedicated budget, uh, uh, they have a permanent unit within and the institution which is uh, responsible to uh, make sure that this uh, gender equality is implemented within uh, the university. Um, uh, the same in uh, uh, the technical university in uh, Germany. Um, the, I know that, for example, the faculty uh, in, in, uh, in, in Germany, they, they offer individual consultation, they offer um, specific funding opportunities uh, to support uh, junior scientists, to encourage and particularly uh, female scientists in, in, in planning and developing their uh, uh, academic uh, career. They, they offer also specific uh, uh, funding program to support young researcher and promote uh, gender equality. Um, so what I, I, I mean uh, behind this equality office, because this is some things that I, I've, been, um, I've been seeing uh, in many universities around the world, but what I think is quite important, it's directly related to the top management. So there is a direct communication between the gender equality office and between the top management of uh, the university. Um, for example, in Belgium, University uh, uh, Libre uh, of uh, of Brussels, it was also decided in, in by the rector uh, of university that uh, one third uh, uh, within uh, uh, within the staff should uh, 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 should be uh, women. And then, you know, there is apologies about that, and uh, we hope that Cornel Guillaume can somehow return to our webinar. In any case, her presentation has provided so many materials to to unwrap. Yes, so I think you're back. I, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, we were a bit worried, but we simply concluded that it must have been your connection. So, would you like to conclude your presentation? Definitely. I, so yeah, I was I was just you know mentioning about about the training as the question being. Um, do as uh, institution provide training or specific classes to make 
the student staff are, are aware about, uh, um, about the bias, about uh, the unconscious bias that we could have. So indeed, again, within the time members, 75% that indeed, in terms of education and training, they are aware about it and have specific classes or training related to it. Whereas looking at the Japanese context uh, and the private universities, still uh, we can see there is uh, some improvement to make sure that uh, the students and the staff are indeed aware that uh, we could have, you know, uh, some unconscious bias uh, related to that matter. Uh, if you if you look at example for for example from KTH, they, within um, within the curriculum, they uh, uh, enter they include uh, the dimension of uh, gender inequality and diversity perspective in um, of fifty uh, mandatory uh, courses. The same in uh, in München in Munich in Germany, there are specific uh, program for female. Uh, lecturers to support them uh, into the careers, to support them uh, when they apply for a training. It's a matter also, um, as it was mentioned before, of trust, uh, of confidence, and of uh, uh, of support. And look at uh, uh, the, the the numbers uh, from uh, the proportion of, for example, of women among the full time uh, professors in that particular university increased from nine. Uh, to twenty uh, percent. Uh, of course, it's a series of initiatives, but I think the matter, uh, it, it was said uh, before in the latest presentation, the matter, you know, of, uh, of, 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 of having, you know, models of mentors is, is quite, uh, it's quite important. And um, I'm not going uh, in, in, into that detail, but just for the record, because I think that the, the different presentation will be shared. And uh, here you have. Um, the, 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 the top uh, initiative uh, that uh, were uh, implemented uh, within uh, the time members compare to uh, the situation in the Japanese university and with the distinction between the national, the public and the private. So a few uh, recommendations is hard to translate gender equality as a priority. We know, we know the context, we know the data, uh, we know the barriers. And but again, how, how to tackle it, how to make sure that it is heard uh, by, by the rectors, by the leadership. How can, make sure, can we make sure that it is, it is considered, has an issue, has a priority within the different institution. Um, I will start indeed, we need, we need data, we need, we need evidence, we need to make sure that uh, the objective that we are mentioning are uh, monitors and are uh, improved. We need also, uh, to uh, um, uh, make sure that uh, gender equality indeed is, is, is part of the solution. If, we, if you think about it, uh, uh, it can be a priority to, to have gender equality, to improve the learning and the working condition within the situation. The, the, the main idea, and I think as uh, universities, we all want to attract uh, the best talent uh, 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 whatever they are, you know, male or female. But as I said in the beginning also of my presentation, at least uh, taking the uh, European context, we know that um, there will be many uh, professional opportunities in science and engineering. So we definitely more, uh, we need to increase the pool actually of people getting into, into science. And it's also a way, because I know we are very sensitive about it, but to show guys that gender equality indeed is a priority for the institution is also a way to, uh, you know, uh, in, in improve uh, the positive uh, image uh, building within the institution and to gain indeed leg legitimacy at the international uh, level. Um, um, so the leadership, indeed, I think it's, I'm, I'm, I, I've been quite clear about it. You need, you need the commitment that the first thing of uh, the university leadership as it has been done in many universities that I've been mentioning, there must be an action plan, there must be a strategy, there must be clear uh, um, concrete uh, objective uh, behind uh, this uh, strategy. The resources are also quite, uh, are quite important. And I, I insist uh, previously to say that, for example, in KTH in Sweden, there is a permanent unit 
this is quite this is a long term actually policy this is a long term uh, vision this, the change uh will happen surely but it will be slow so we need a vision we need a policy but we need um we need the dedicated processes we need the the, the, the human resources we need the funding behind and this is what has been uh, set up also within uh, within the university and transparency. What I mean, um, as I said before, we need indicators. We need to monitor. It's one thing to say that you're going to increase. It's another thing then to show uh, the concrete result and 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 then to raise you know the right conclusion. I mean, even if it doesn't work, to say okay, we tried, but still, uh, but at least you know in what uh, which direction you could uh, you could go. Indicators, indeed. There must be quantitative and there must be a qualitative. It's well, the percentage of women, but also the type of uh, of position. And as I say before, um, you you need to be realistic in a time limit that you want to uh, to set up. And indeed, a last action that has been developed by the by the, by the, the universities that I've been visiting is the specific uh, funding uh, program. I know that it was also uh, mentioned by. Uh, uh, the two uh, previous uh, speakers about specific awards also that we could have uh, for uh, women specific training and mentoring uh, program to build uh, the, the, the trust, uh, uh, the confidence uh, for uh, for these uh, women. And indeed, uh, and it was also mentioned uh, to find a way uh, about work-life balance. Uh, uh, we know that in most cases, um the, the the it's it's important uh, to have um the child care provision to make sure that uh, uh, men and women uh, could have a good work life balance um a last um, very last point i think it's uh, i find it quite interesting that as uh, or the president of the european commission was saying it's 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 it doesn't make sense you know to using only half of the population half of the ideas half of the energy is not good enough and 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 again as she was saying yes indeed gender equality strategy must uh, be a priority um, to promote equality between men and and women and to and to conclude i wish um i wish for uh, uh, for the world i would say for the scientific community but uh, uh, since we have uh, today uh, colleagues also from, uh, from 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 japan and we were uh, talking about the japanese context I wish uh, that there could be uh, more uh, women uh, as uh, the women that you see on this uh, slide, Sadako Gata, Sagato Uriara, Katsuko Sagwashi, Shaki Mukai. They are uh, represented uh, both from the politic uh, political side, from, from the scientific side, and um, uh, what, uh, uh, where actually uh, women can be uh, represented. And I wish that uh, we could see uh, more. Uh, of them. So I thank you very much uh, for uh, for your attention and uh, and uh, happy to uh, to discuss uh, later on about uh, this uh, matter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gwenelle, for this uh, uh, very extensive and very thorough presentation. Thank you so much again. <laughs> to continue our presentations, I would like to invite two speakers who will be presenting jointly. The title of their presentation is Gender Perspective in STEM Disciplines in Spain Universities. One of our speakers is Encina Cava Iglesias, who is a professor at Universidad de Santiago de Compostela. The other speaker professor is Elizabeth Master de Les Valls, and she's a professor at the Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya. If I okay, could thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you very much for the, for the invitation. Uh, uh, I'm Elizabeth, I'm the one that is going to speak, but I'm Fina Calvo is here with us and she can answer your questions at the end of the session. Um, first of all, let me um, give you a three representative data of Spain. As seen before, we have this disproportion of female uh, students in our degrees. We have um, most of the girls go to health science, arts, and humanities, and below 25% uh, of the students in engineering and architecture are female students. 
uh, this is consequence of several facts. Uh, you will see if you, once you have the the presentation, you will hear, you will have all the links available. Okay, um, from several statistical studies, it has been uh, seen that still nowadays we have uh, female students have lower self self confidence levels compared to their uh, male counterparts. Also, we have uh, gender stereotypes. We'll talk about it afterwards, and there's a lack of female. Um, reference. So it's difficult for female students to go towards these STEM studies because there are no references. Okay. Not only focusing on students, but also on educators. We still have gender gap in, in daily duties. For instance, um, female educators are more focused on, in, on teaching innovation, also on supervising students, and not so focused on projects, um, papers, and this type of thing that are nowadays the ones that um, just um, are used for the career the development. So this is uh, an issue. And of course, I'm not going to focus on it, but uh, caring tasks in, in the family are mainly carried out by, by female. So this is the scenario. Of course, we need uh, to change this uh, also from the university. It has already mentioned that we have uh, several focus uh, areas to, to modify. And in this presentation, Anthina and me, we are going to focus on teaching, gender perspective in teaching, and what can we do as educators? Okay, sorry. Um, in in these uh, terms, we have several laws in Spain, uh, very similarly as uh, the previous speaker has, has said, so we have to do our gender equality plans, we have our gender equality offices, and so on. We have to include equality principles in the studies. We have to include gender principle, gender perspective in teaching and research. And in the latest years, we also have um, to include a transversal general competence, gender competence. Okay, so this seems very promising, but still nowadays, the real level of inclusion of uh, gender perspective is very low. So we need something that really pushes us, something that is going to assess the universities and check that we are doing our work. Okay. Uh, a good example is this pioneering initiative that was published in 2020. It's a general framework for incorporating the gender perspective in higher education and teaching. It's applied uh, only in Catalonia, which is in the northeast region of Spain. And it forces uh, uh, Catalan universities to include this gender perspective and how it, it's done. So uh, it's checked not only for the new degrees, but also for the already existing degrees in all the monitoring, modification, and accreditation process. And this has uh, led to lots of new and promising initiatives in the university. So that this has been proved to be a very good strategy to apply. Uh, how can we do it? We have um, lots of guides on how to include gender perspective in the different uh, area, uh, areas of knowledge. At present, we have 29 guides published by Xarxa Vivas Universitats. 11 of these guides are within the STEAM fields, and this set of guides is being recognized by the European Institute of Gender Equality. Um, now I'm, I'm going to show some some works that uh, has been done not only by Antina and me, but also by Irene Epifanio and Sonia Estrade. We have first um, worked on which are these gender stereotypes, why females are not in, being enrolled in some of the STEM uh, degrees. For instance, if we focus on physics, uh, the the image that we have of physics is that, well, the aim is to studying the material walls using formalism and abstractions, so nothing to do with emotions, nothing to do with values or ethics or um, even society. You know? So it has been to have a very difficult level. So people that is involved in physics are classified as very intelligent, but also as geeks and with few social skills. So this is not very promising for person that is um, committed with society and values. And most women 
Irish in this um, group. Okay, so it's not very attractive with these uh, stereotypes. Uh, the another example is engineering, where I seem to be uh, the the objective is designing objects uh, and or tools to solve problems, but it, people is not aware that these problems is society problems. So it seems that we're going as engineers to solve and to design just objects, but these objects are not going to be used by people, and this is wrong. So we need to change this point of view. Uh, contrary to physics, engineering seems to have a rich labor market. Um, the one that is working as an engineer seems to be aggressive. It has to have a very strong leadership skill uh, with high self-concepts. So it's completely different, but uh, the student is seen as an individualist and object oriented. So it's also not very attractive for female students. And the same occurs for ICT study, studies. And so this is something that we need to change. And as educators, we can change it in our classroom or try to change it at least, okay? What are we doing? Um, Sorry, I don't know if you see it. Okay. Um, we have gender specific subjects in uh, regarding STEM. Uh, for instance, in in STEM degrees, we have this is one of the examples: gender relations, science, technology, and society. But note, this is an elective subject. On the other side, in more social oriented uh, degrees, we have mandatory subjects that really really gender with science. So this has to still to be changed, it's something, but we should improve it. We have to include a mandatory subject in STEM degrees. Uh, what else? Uh, the number of trainings is being increased um, drastically in the latest years in all universities or almost all Spanish universities. And we are trying to include genders in a transversal way, both contents, methodology, classroom management and assessment. And for instance, we try to include this sense of utility of the subjects. So they are the subjects and the studies and the, the, the knowledge is used for the society, to improve society, to, to improve, the, to, to improve the, the life of people. We have some hints on how to apply gender, for instance, for specific subjects in engineering and so on. We're performing several, not only trainings, but also innovate, uh, teaching innovating uh, projects uh, in several Spanish universities. Okay, um, this is one example. This is uh, Anthena's work, in fact, and uh, she's introducing a gender perspective in her physics subject. And these are two of the several uh, examples that we could include here. For instance, she's um, proposing one activity that is including uh, gender reference, uh, sorry, female reference at Wikipedia. Here we have an example of uh, Toshiko Yuasa, the first um, nuclear physics uh, physician, female nuclear physician in Japan. And also uh, you can use the uh, sustainable development goals in your subjects to approach gender and humanity and ethical values into your STEM, field, STEM subject. I suggest you to see these examples afterwards. We have a uh, summer school uh, since two, 2000, 200, 2020, sorry, being held in several universities uh, in a cooperative way where a female physics um, students um, meet together to build not only uh, networking among them, but also among professionals to know better strategies to improve their career and so on. So this is a very successful activity. And another successful activity is uh, a massive open and online course held by Universitat Jaume I. This is the work done by Irene Epifanio. And I think it's a good example of how to disseminate these concepts on, on the introduction of gender perspective in teaching. Okay. This is focused on math co-education. Just to, to conclude, um, we have um, many univers Spanish universities actively involved in introducing gender perspective in teaching. 
we have some uh, reports that gather all the information, the relevant information in this uh, subject, in this topic, and we have many guides and tools on how to do it. So the situation is pretty good. It seems to be pretty good, but still there are many things to be improved. We have, for instance, a strong commitment of uh, female educators, but we need this commitment to be um, present also for male educators. Probably we need also to deepen in these uh, new masculinity, masculinities and, and, and other aspects of gender in teaching to, to make it more general for everyone, inter interesting for anyone, for everyone. We need more incentives. Uh, we need to be a part of the, um, of the items to value the work that educators are doing. So not only papers, not only projects, not only um, knowledge transfer, but also teaching and uh, teaching innovation must be considered in this assessment of educators. Yeah, so we need to change this um, concept of academic excellence. And I think this is urgent. And also we need a unified political action as that has shown before uh, regarding this um, Catalonia framework. So we need uh, that the official uh, quality agency of uh, universities pushes towards this direction and forces universities to really apply gender um, perspective in teaching and also in other levels of the university. So I, I was very fast, but the time was reduced. I think this is fairly enough. If you have any questions, just after afterwards, you can ask to and me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. It was quite a joy mm -hmm. to hear the Spanish perspective. And uh, thank you again for being available for the Q&A time. I would like to encourage our audience to submit the questions in the Q&A box. We have already received two questions and they will be answered in real time in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you again, Elizabeth and Encina. And we are looking forward to uh, receiving your answers to our questions in a few minutes. Our last presenter today is Nora Kulak. She is professor at the University of Potsdam. The title of her presentation is STEM Research Careers for Women in Germany. Since she cannot be with us today in real time, she has sent us a video, which will be played in just a second. Hi, my name is Nora Kulak. I'm a professor at the University of Potsdam in Germany, and I would like to present some of um, the aspects about uh, STEM research careers for women in Germany. This will be a personal, um, uh, from the personal perspective. Uh, so I will present my background and career path. And in general, I will talk about uh, women in science in Germany and the opportunities that are available to them. First of all, uh, I would like to mention that it might be quite challenging to be a woman in science in Germany, probably, but in, in all countries in, in the world, especially if you're trying to combine family yeah, with three kids with a career. But it's just uh, a, such a great and exciting um, job to work at the university with students and to do research. So that's why it's very important to, to look at what is possible um, to achieve such a, a career. My scientific background is inorganic uh, chemistry and to emphasize that it's quite interdisciplinary what we are doing. Uh, starting from my PhD work at the University of Heidelberg, um, there were connections to biology. When I did a postdoc at the Federal Institute for Materials Research and Testing, we were in contact with physicists. Then I moved to the US for a second Massachusetts Institute of Technology, working with inorganic compounds uh, for medicinal purposes. And then um, I moved back to Germany um, in 2011 to become an assistant professor at Freie Universität Berlin, connecting all the uh, things that we have done before. So um, inorganic chemistry is the background, but touching uh, also in different areas, biology, medicine, and physics. Um, I then moved to Magdeburg, which is a smaller city uh, in the west of 
uh, Berlin. Um, and as chemists, we're embedded in the uh, department for engineering. That's why I also got into contact with engineers. Uh, engineers. This um, is maybe a little bit unusual, uh, such a career um, touching on different fields. But uh, in my case, it was just fantastic to have all these um, all these different research fields and um, we can now say that we can um, um, work in a quite interdisciplinary field with inorganic chemistry as the basic um, discipline of chemistry at the University of Potsdam, where I have been as a, a professor now since uh, a couple of weeks actually. Uh, coordination chemistry, this is a little bit more specific what we are doing and um, I cannot go into detail because I assume not all of you are uh, chemists, but this is about the interaction of coordination compounds or the inorganic compounds with different uh, biomolecules and you can see that we work um, on tailoring them with different functions and for different applications in, in the matters of the field, but also um, synthesis uh, purposes. So, for example, we design a catalyst for green oxidation reactions in collaboration with other researchers and a bigger research program and for the medicinal application for the Charité, the universal in uh, Berlin. Why do I think that such research is important? Um, because um, there are different yeah, there are different perspectives on um, on life, on biology, when you ask a, medicinal, a medical scientist, um, he or she would say, uh, so for example, dioxygen transport works with red blood cells. A biologist or biochemist would say, yeah, it's the protein hemoglobin uh, that transports dioxygen, but it's a chemist. Uh, in coordination chemistry, or we can also say bioorganic, bioinorganic chemistry, it's the metal complex that interacts with uh, dioxygen. So different perspectives on uh, the same uh, function. Our research program possible without many collaborators uh, to show just a few um, from uh, Magdeburg, from uh, other universities in Germany, but also internationally from uh, Poland, for example, or here from New Zealand. Um, many, many people have worked uh, with me together in the last and uh, they are especially uh, supportive because, as I said in the beginning, combining family with a research career is not that easy, and they have to be uh, understanding in order to, yeah, in order to understand uh, the the situation and uh, funding. And um, you can see from DAD and the German research in the last few years as well, as well as from the European Union. So this is my background. And uh, um, more generally, I would like to um, discuss career paths. So when you start your career after a postdoc in uh, Germany, this is general, not, not for women specifically, um, there are different choices. So you can either, uh, either be an assistant professor, which is called W1 uh, in Germany, or you can have, um, you can hold a junior research group leader position, quite a long uh, expression that many different formats and after five to six years or even earlier you can apply for w2 or w3 professor positions um, there's no difference like in the us system for example um, so regarding the salary maybe it's comparable that w2 is comparable to associate professorship and w3 comparable to, to full professorship <clears throat> but there's not such uh, such a difference uh, like, like in other uh, systems. Um, but yeah, uh, theoretically, this would be W1, then two, and then uh, three. I would like to mention problems, uh, and then uh, I will also um, talk about support for women um, in science in Germany. So I found this article in the Science Magazine quite a long time ago. This was from 1999, where only 6% of all professors in, at German universities were women. So this is a really known, low number, which, uh, which already shows a huge problem. But you can also see that uh, was done here in 2011, it was already 20%. And in 2022, it was already 27%. Uh, but still, it's not enough because when you look at this number here, 
percent of first year students are actually female. So there's a huge gap. And um, you will see when I mentioned on support that there are also possibilities to, uh, to solve this problem, but we are quite far away uh, still. So I uh, also put here some links uh, into the slide that you can look up the numbers uh, in the original resources. Problem um, is so still when uh, I receive a, such a position, uh, W12 or 3, there's a gender pay gap. There's a lot of uh, discussion going uh, on about gender pay gap in general. But I was surprised to see this numbers also at universities um, up to 700 euros, for example, when you compare the um, average salaries of male and female professors, there's such a huge um, difference. So this is, a, <laughs> uh, but people are aware of this. And that's why uh, for a couple of years now, for every committee that hires professors, there are equal opportunities officers uh, that are present in uh, the selection committees and um, they have to be asked about their opinion and um, in the case of equal achievements sorry for missing the end for uh, equal achievements uh, for men and women the women will be uh, will be hired so this already shows that uh, actively they're being done for supporting women for professional careers at universities. There are special programs at different universities here at Potsdam University. There's a nice uh, program for uh, female professors. Um, for me, it was great in my time, at my time in Berlin to be part of the Profil program, uh, which means professionalization for women in research and uh, teaching mentoring training and networking we had a lot of class a lot of course how to apply for professorship positions we had um, mentors that taught us uh, that mentored us for um, for being um, professors um, different soft skill training sessions uh, a really great uh, program uh, for one uh, for for two uh, for two years during my time as an assistant uh, professor very successful um, so a lot of uh, women that you see here are professors now at uh, German universities or even in other uh, countries. Their websites um, for supporting women, for example, um, there's a, a, this fact that many, many scientific awards just go to men or go to men in much higher percentage. So this has to be uh, changed and um, for being more aware of about these scientific awards, one can look up uh, the different possibilities um, here, Wissenschafts or scientific awards. What I find very important is also um, something that I cannot give a link uh, website for is uh, that one has to work actively for a network of supporting researchers because at every step um, one has to ask for evaluation, one has to ask for uh, reports from different uh, researchers. So when you apply for university positions, um, the other professors for their opinion about you and you have, you have to have this network in order to, to uh, have some support. Otherwise, it, it's very um, difficult. So one has to work, especially as a woman, very actively to uh, build up this network of supporting uh, researchers. With this, I would like to uh, thank you uh, for listening. Um, you can contact me anytime if you have any questions. You can see here website and um, all the best for you um, and bye from Germany. Thank you, Nora Kolak, uh, Professor Nora Kolak, for the very extensive presentation talking about the situation of female researchers in STEM in Germany. We actually have three questions lined up, and um, due to the fact that we have gone significantly over time, I would like to ask our speakers to answer each and every one of them briefly. Let's start with the, uh, the very first one. Many of these program, many of these programs stress that women in STEM need additional support. However, there are those who feel that this is unfair 
that they get more support. How do we mitigate these feelings of resentment and increase allies? Are classes at the university level really the way to go? Who would like to answer this question? Just, just to, to break the eyes, as we as as we say, uh, it's a very interesting uh, it's a very interesting question, but it's a very difficult one at the same time. It it's a question that we could raise for any kind of uh, for any kind of of discrimination. Uh, it's true that I I fully agree that we must avoid uh, uh, framing this uh, initiative as a, I would say a zero uh, sum uh, game where uh, support for one group. Uh, diminishes, you know, the support for another. This is exactly not what we want to to achieve, and and this is not actually this is not a women problem or a men problem. This is a societal problem. So first, we need to agree on that, and then I, I would say even if I don't have a clear answer to it, because I'm I, I feel a bit I, I have to say uncomfortable, but at least I, I would say that we need to clearly communicate why actually we are doing it. What are the purpose and the objective of this initiative to address historical, actually, disparities? Um, and we need to, might be to, 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 to raise actually, um, indeed, uh, the improvement of the results about also the initiative uh, that uh, we, uh, we are implementing. And I would say, we need also to have in this discussion, and this is something I'm 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 often facing in this kind of, uh, in this kind of discussion. And as I just say, this is not a women problem, uh, this is a societal problem. So we should be men and women discussing all together as a society, as a community, how we can address if we do agree that it is a priority or it is an issue, we must agree all together how we can address actually this issue and find the right initiative um, to do so. But I, I repeat, this is a societal issue. May thank you so much. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Um, yes, uh, Please go thank you very much yeah. for a very important uh, uh, you know, question. And it's very difficult. Uh, as, uh, uh, you know, I just want to add uh, some comment. Um, uh, we uh, at the University of Tokyo, we conducted a survey to uh, female students why they don't they do not they don't want to go on to the science, and then uh, we found out that uh, if there are few female uh, you know faculties and also uh, few uh, female students, uh, it will be it's very hard for girls to go on to the field. So I think, uh, you know, it's it's uh, very important to have some incentive that if you go to the you know, field, there will be some uh, something different. So that's why I, I think in the beginning, if you reach to the, some point, I don't think that we don't have to, you know, provide extra, uh, you know, uh, like a funding and sort of stuff. But unfortunately, we haven't reached the point yet. So in order to reach the point, I think uh, we need to have some uh, extra support to do that. So uh, I think uh, that might be uh, one of the explanation to uh, uh, for people who think that uh, uh, to feel some resentment for this, uh, you know, uh, special support, particularly for women. Right. Thank you so much. The next question is, I was watching the part about institutional strategies in Europe, training, mentoring, courses on unconscious bias equality, gender equality, office with funding, etc. But I didn't see or missed such examples in Japanese universities context. Can any speaker give examples of institutional methods to address gender equality issue in Japanese universities, especially those methods that are provided to everyone, unlike female-oriented awards limited to few women? This is in the Q&A box. So those of you who would like to answer can find it in the answer session as I clicked on answer live. 
since it asks for the Japanese uh, uh, context, I was wondering if, uh, again, Professor Oshima uh, could be in. I I'm uh, reading uh, the question, so could you give me uh, uh, extra time? I, I think I need to sure, think sure. about that. It's, again, um, in the answered uh, session, not in the open uh, section of the Q&A box. And uh, did I see my colleagues have just told me that, uh, um, Professor Elizabeth, you actually raised your hand. Okay, please go ahead. Apologies about that. Okay, just... no, don't worry. It just meanwhile, um, <laughs> Professor Shima is looking for the information regarding previous yes. question, the resentment. I think we can do two things to concrete things. One is um, everyone, all educators need to have the data, the statistical data of mm. the proportion of female and then they will they will see that there's a need and then they will be more open to these quarters but of course these quarters must be applied with softly <laughs> yes <laughs> so we, we we need to find a balance between the need and and the the pain that we that we can cause you know? <laughs> so this is critical but also what university can do is to help um primary education teachers to change the stereotypes and to and to create activities in classroom for young students, six year old students, I mean, huh? and and to change all these stereotypes and to to see that it's not a male career, physics or engineering or ICT, whatever. It's something that will help society. And I want to help society. I want to go there. So we have a lot to do there, and, and we can do it. Thank you so much. And apologies for not noticing that you raised your hand initially. Uh, I would like to suggest that um, uh, since we are significantly running out of time, uh, some of these questions could also be answered by email at a, a later time. Um, Professor Oshima, what do you think? You have actually two questions lined up. Oh, one of really? them, in okay. the open. Uh, yes, one of uh, them in the open open uh, <laughs> section, and the other one in the uh, answer section of the the Q and A box. Okay, uh, let me, uh, well, I'm not so sure I get uh, uh, quite uh, the follow the question given by uh, Ms. Suzuki, but uh, I, I think, um, uh, let me uh, try. I, I, I think uh, in Japan, um, uh, you, you, you mentioned that uh, you didn't see or miss um, such example in Japanese university context, uh, like a training and sort of stuff. I, I think, uh, 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 well, I couldn't say that, uh, you know, uh, overall, but the University of Tokyo was uh, a bit behind in this uh, uh, the aspect. But uh, uh, since, uh, 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 Fuji uh, Socho, uh, the the president uh, after the uh, uh, Fuji Professor Fuji became uh, president, we are trying to uh, uh, redesign this kind of uh, you know, function, and then uh, we try to promote the the female uh, 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 faculty members too. But in order to do that, I think uh, we need to have a uh, uh, transparency and sort of stuff. So that's the thing we have uh, done. And also we have also tried to organize some seminars to uh, minimize the gender bias, not to uh, the faculty members and also uh, the students too. So we have uh, like a lecture for the gender about the gender too. So I think uh, it's uh, very slow, but uh, it, it's uh, changing now. And also I like to mention that uh, JST also promoted uh, the female issue. We have a, a special, uh, like a funding to uh, university to promote female uh, the researchers. And then uh, after they receive the funding, uh, they uh, dramatically changed. So I think, uh, uh, for example, the number of uh, faca female faculty members uh, increases, increased, and so of stuff. So I think there is a good uh, the result, which are 
uh, which uh, resulted from uh, you know, funding. So I, I think uh, GST as well as uh, Japanese university are trying to do in their own way. So, so I hope I answer your question. <laughs> And the other question. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I'm afraid I have to leave, but uh, uh, what is the other question? I think uh... the other question is is very brief. In Japan, <laughs> students have to decide either humanities or natural sciences in high school, and many female students do choose humanities. By engaging with those high school students, do they change the course, or more effort should be made to remedy their science phobia? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very um, much for your question. Uh, I cannot find the question, but uh, maybe I, I can uh, answer the question. Uh, as you mentioned, because of uh, entrance examination, uh, you know, the younger students have to decide which way the science or humanity, uh, which way they're going in a very, like a, uh, like a, 16 years old it's not only for female but also for male students so that's the uh, very serious issue for uh, Japanese uh, interest in examination but aside from that I found that that uh, when we uh well, I mentioned about the steam education and I, I think uh, uh, the the women try to tackle problems in a different way comparing to men. And then uh, when we address that uh, like, uh, mathematics and uh, physics are very important, that may not appeal to female uh, students. But then uh, if we show the uh, like a social issue, and in order to solve the social issue, maybe you need to, uh, I mean, you need to, you need like uh, mathematics and physics. So that's why you need to study mathematics and physics. If you approach that way, they will show the interest in science and, uh, and uh, mathematics. So I think if you change how the way to teach science and mathematics in an early stage, like elementary school and uh, junior high, that may change uh, their, uh, you know, the, uh, 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 the way how they decide the measure. So I think that it may take time, but that would be a very different up, uh, 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 approach uh, comparing the conventional in a way. Thank you so much. I'm afraid we really have no time left for further questions at this point. I would like to invite our last speaker for today. Hi, Sperenz is the first counselor Head of Science, Innovation, Digital and other EU policy section at the delegation of the European Union to Japan. If I could please ask you to deliver your speech. Good day, good day everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be joining you for, the, for this event. Um, first of all, I would like to express my thanks to all the presenters for their, for their very interesting presentations. I'd also like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to make some closing remarks. So I'm Heis Behrens. I'm the new head of the section on science, innovation, and digital policies at the EU delegation to Japan. I arrived just two weeks ago in, in Tokyo, and this is actually the first event that I'm speaking at in my new function. And I hope, I hope that this gives a small indication that the European Commission considers it actually a really important subject. And so I want to use my concluding remarks to say a little bit about what the Commission does uh, on this topic. I'll be doing that in a minute, but I wanted to start actually by letting you know that probably today the European Commission will have a new commissioner uh, for research and innovation, Mrs. Ivanova. It depends on the European Parliament. They have to give the green light to her appointment. And for that, she had a hearing in the European Parliament yesterday. Uh, why am I saying that? Because ahead of the hearing, she was sent a lot of written questions, and many of those had a gender equality angle. They were about the role of gender in science. And I, in the chat, you see that I've uh, put 
there are two links. The first one is about that. You can see how she reacted to the various questions, including those on gender equality in science. And I think it's maybe interesting for you to have a look at it because it gives an idea where the political thinking within the office of the commissioner and herself, where that is going. The second link that I've attached to the chat so everyone can see it is a reference tool that, um, that the commission is funding. And it is basically a set of statistics on women in science. This, called, this, this tool is called uh, She Figures. And um, what it does, it shows statistics that are about gender differences when it comes to graduating from doctoral studies, all the way to participating in the labor market, difference in acquiring decision-making roles or leadership roles, something that has been dis discussed quite a bit today or the difference in, in men and women's working conditions and their research outputs. And I think for everyone who has been listening today, this is maybe a useful tool to look at. The figures are about 2021. Next year in 2024, this will all be updated. So I invite you to, to look at that. Now, I'm very conscious that you've been listening to many uh, uh, presentations already. Allow me though to touch on three small uh, commission initiatives. One deals with gender equality and research funding. One is on gender and our multilateral discussions, more political discussions about the global research environment in general. And one on gender and innovation. Now on the first, gender and funding, we really talk about Horizon Europe. And I think Mrs. Guillaume has done an excellent job in, in explaining that if you want to get funding on the Horizon Europe, having a gender equality plan in place is now a requirement. So I, I will not repeat that, but I just wanted to add that I think this is really quite a crucial change and something that maybe can make a big difference in, uh, in what we're trying to achieve. So I, I wanted to repeat that. The second thing is about gender and our multilateral discussions. I don't know for those who follow research policy in general, but it's a much more political discussion than before. We talk about uh, economic security, we talk about research and strategic autonomy, we talk about research security. These are, you know, quite sensitive political issues. And for that, we want to stay close to our to like-minded partners, to our allies, to, to close partners of us. So the European Commission is having multilateral dialogues, including with Japan, uh, Japan is participating, on how we want to maintain our principles and values in a research environment. So we organize in various workshops, sometimes about research integrity, integrity, sometimes about academic freedom, but also on gender equality and inclusiveness. And there are many workshops have been done on this topic. And if you wish, I can uh, send you the reference to that. But the point that I'm trying to make, it goes all the way up to a high level uh, multilateral discussions, including also at the G7. Final comment I want to make, gender and innovation. I think if we have listened to Mrs. Oshima's uh, presentation and Mrs. Pula presentation. They talk a lot about awards that have been established. And I would like to refer to a new award that will come in 2024, which is set up by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, together with the European Innovation Council. They will organize a prize to select excellence amongst women innovators. So maybe something to, to look forward to. Let me stop here. Um, uh, of course, all these examples are not to show that everything is going super well in the European Union. There's a lot of work still to be done. It's also all the presentations uh, um, testify to. But I would like to thank all the presenters for their presentations. Mr. Kobayashi for his opening remarks. Your access, uh, Judith San and Taya San, for, for organizing this. And of course, to the audience for showing their interest and staying with us throughout the seminar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heis Behrens. And I would like to especially thank our colleagues uh, for helping us organize this event, all our speakers to have made time for us, and our audience who attended this session. Please follow us on Twitter, Line, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I'd like to invite you to visit our portal every now and then and see you in our upcoming events. Thank you so much and goodbye.